Welcome back to Matter Part 2. Today I'll discuss alloys, which are a special type of solution involving metals, and the law of definite composition. Come see what's new. Alloys are a physical combination of two or more metals. They might have special properties like being more lightweight, more resistant to corrosion, or just being overall sturdier. Some common types of alloy include steel, which is a mixture of iron and carbon. You also have bronze, which is copper and tin, and brass, which is copper and zinc. There are two types of alloys, substitutional and interstitial. A substitutional alloy means the atoms are just about the same sizes and one atom replaces the other. An example would be brass, where you have copper and zinc. These two elements are found close to each other on the periodic table. On the other hand, you have interstitial alloys, which means the atoms are completely different sizes. One atom is huge, the other atom is really small. The small atoms fit inside the small spaces formed by the big atoms interlocking with each other. An example would be steel. Steel is comprised of iron and carbon, which are completely different sizes, and you can see how they're located in different areas of the periodic table. To give you more visuals, you can see how in brass, the copper and zinc atoms are basically just alternating and mixing evenly with each other. Meanwhile, steel is interstitial because you can see how the carbon atoms are much smaller than the iron atoms, and the carbon atoms are fitting in the small gaps. Pure gold is too soft and malleable, so typically other common metals are added to make the gold more durable. The carat system measures the purity of gold. It's actually quite simple to understand. 24 carats is the highest form or the highest purity of gold. That's 100% pure gold. 22 carats means it's 22 parts gold, two parts of some other metal that's added to make it an alloy. 18 carats means it's 18 parts gold, six parts of some other metal. And you can see down there, 12 carats means it's 50% purity because it's 12 parts gold and 12 parts of some other metal that's mixed in. Various metals can actually change the color of your gold alloy. So for example, if you want white gold, you mix it with palladium. If you want rose gold, you mix gold with copper. And if you want green gold, you can mix gold and silver. We'll switch gears now, and we'll talk about the law of definite proportions, which basically states that all compounds and substances are made of atoms and elements in the same ratios, and they all have the same percent by mass. So for example, if you take water, the formula for water is always H2O. It's always two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen. To figure out water's percent by mass, you might need a periodic table for this one. But I did the math above me. So it turns out water has two hydrogens, which weigh two grams, and it has one oxygen, which weighs 16 grams. So in total, water has a mass of 18 grams. Well, if you go two divide by 18, you would find that hydrogen makes up 11% of the total. And if you go 16 divided by 18, you would get oxygen being 89% of the total. I wanna do problem 30 from your notes, which touches up on this idea of definite proportions. So you have one gram of hydrogen reacting with 19 grams of fluorine. The problem will ask, what is the percent by mass of hydrogen in the compound that's formed? So first I find my total, the total mass of the substance is 20 grams for the whole entire compound. So because they want to know just the percent of hydrogen, the percent by mass of hydrogen, I would go 1 divided by 20, and I get 5%. So this compound is comprised of 5% hydrogen by mass. For problem number 31, it reads, if 3.5 grams of X reacts with 10.5 grams of Y to form the compound XY, what is the percent by mass of X? And what is the percent of mass of Y? So first I find the total, so I add the two together, I get 14 grams of XY in the total. If I want to find the percent by mass of compound X, I would have to go 3.5 over 14. And if I want to find the percent by mass of compound Y, I take 10 and a half and I divide by 14. And then I use my calculator, I would get 25% is X, and the other 75% is Y. That concludes my lesson on matter. Part 1 was on properties and changes. Part 2 was on alloys and the law of definite proportions. Make sure you complete the rest of the online notes, numbers 1 to 33. 
I did more than half of these problems. If you watch the video again, you'll see that I've given away most of the answers. And also include an ID photo of yourself in the pictures of the work you'll submit online. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Win Chemistry.